So Esther is sitting on her bed, and she's thinking, oh, I'm going to go out on my deck. And she thought, there must be whales out there. And then she thought, but first I'll brush my teeth. And then she thought, oh, and now I've lost my teeth. And then she thought, and now I'll take a shower. And then she thought, and now I'll get something to eat. And in a few minutes, she begins receiving pictures from her family who are out there watching the whales. <laughs> uh, they're watching the whales that Esther could have been out there watching. But Esther didn't let it be as easy as it could be, you see. It could have been very easy. It's so easy because your inner being knows where everything that you want is and knows when it's where you want it. In other words, knows when and where. Timing, 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 timing. And so when you get off on your timing, then life gets harder for you. Then you miss opportunities, you miss conversations, you miss the dovetailing of thought. And so that's why this getting in the receptive mode is really at the basis of everything that you're asking about. Because when you're in the receptive mode, then you have good timing. You know the difference between you're going to work and you're going through the streets and there are lots of stoplights. And you know the difference between those days when you miss the traffic and you miss the stoplights and you just go, 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 because your timing is on. You see, and everything in your world can be like that. It's just a matter of having the experience. Esther is laughing because she said she began counting the things that the universe was orchestrating for her that she was not allowing to unfold in the most timely of manner. We would like her to know it was partly in preparation for this conversation that we're all having with you. But just the same, you have a concierge in the sky, not literally in the sky, but you might as well think of us there as anywhere. Who know? where all the pieces to all of the things that are important to you are. And when you give up this flawed premise that there are blessings in heaven from hard work and struggle, and instead you accept that the blessings are offered to you on an ongoing basis, but you must be absent of hardship and struggle in order to tap into that, then you're off and running. And you reset yourself by meditating and opening your... That's how you reset when that's things are... That's the best are... way. List of positive aspects will do it. But if you're already not feeling good, then the positive aspects just annoy you. A rampage of appreciation will do it too. But if you're already not feeling very good, then it just causes the tension of the train going that way and that way. We would not try to make it happen. We would look for an opportunity to quiet your mind. And you can do it as often as you want, but we would certainly do it at least 15 or 20 minutes at the beginning of every day. We really would. We would not miss the opportunity for the timing. So you say that you work hard. Tell us about what you do. I'm a dentist, and I'm an on I also have online businesses as well in developing uh, solutions that can go for the masses. And? And help them learn wherever they are in the world, cutting-edge stuff. All right, so we're hearing about them. What's in it for you? What rings your bells about your work? I love doing challenging things, and I love to be the first one challenging. doing something. Challenging. What do you mean by challenging? You love proving yourself? You love proving worthiness? I get bored easily if it's something I'm doing and it's just predictable. I don't find excitement in that. I like to do new things. I, I like newness. So are you saying you like to be more instinctual in the art of your work? Instinctual more tuned in, more receiving of higher possibilities, that you would like to experience the evolution of something that is rather mundane? I have a hard time keeping track of uh, or keeping up with these instinctual things I'm getting, so I'm getting overwhelmed. Like I want things to move faster because I receive a lot, so I just but I get bogged down in the, the, this mundaneness of certain things. Because, you see, oh, this is so good. So as you're tapping in and receiving the inspiration for this, and then the universe is queuing it up, if you're not vibrationally up to speed with what the universe has queued up for you, then you get overwhelmed by it. Overwhelmment is the emotion that you feel when you're asking for more than you're letting in. These are the words that we want you to hear right now. You'll hear more as these days are going by. We'll be talking to you all week long. But the important thing that we want you to hear, we're just going to make this very strong statement, very strong, very accurate, truest thing that we've ever said, and you're going to know this by the time this week has concluded. This time-space reality has the wherewithal 
to deliver to you in fullness anything that you desire. Anything, no exceptions. So when an idea occurs to you, you can accomplish it without the struggle that you have come to believe in. So what's happening to you, your ability to connect with source and receive these ideas is not being sustained. That's why the difference between step three and step four is so important. Because step three, receptive mode, yahoo. But if you are not maintaining your connection to step three, then as the idea comes and you're not ready to be 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 ready, then it feels to you like you have to compensate for that with action. And there's not enough action in the world to compensate for that stumbling in the resistance, you see. So the simple answer is more will not come to you than you can accomplish. But the accomplishment has to be allowed by you to come to you in the same way and from the same place that the ideas did to begin with. Now, what that means is, when your source, when your inner being gives you an idea, it's not like your inner being is saying, we've got a brilliant idea and here it is. Now work hard and make it happen. That's not what your inner being is saying. Your inner being says, here's an idea and more ideas will follow that will make it unfold with ease. Can you feel that? But when you receive the idea, you haven't received the next and the next and the next and the next, and you fall back on your action in order to make it happen. Esther knows the feeling of that because the ideas keep coming and Esther will say to us and to others, I get really rested and then I make a schedule for the year and then we have to fly it then the whole team has to get on an airplane and be over there and be over there and be over there. And We were so rested and so ambitious. Now we actually have to do the physicality to make that happen. She's not saying that anymore. What she's saying is, I love flying. It's so easy to get from place to place. She's saying, all of us moving about, some coming from Canada, some coming from Arizona, some coming from Utah. They're coming from so many places. And she says, we don't miss flights, we don't lose bags, we don't miss shows. It just keeps unfolding. And the more Esther says that, then the easier it is. The easier it is for her. She can't even remember the last time she had a hiccup in her flight. You see what we're getting at? Or she could say, oh yeah, I made the schedule really hard this year. We're going to 40 cities and this many cruises and this many this and this many this and this many this and just introduce resistance to the equation. And then the same schedule that could have been delightful and easy is now hard just because of the attitude that's been focused upon it. You see the difference? Yeah. Is it patience too? Maybe I don't have enough patience. Patience has been a key thing in my We're life. We're not encouragers of patience. No. Okay. Because patience is what you need to acquire when you haven't figured out how to line up with source energy. When you figure out how to line up, you don't need patience because it just unfolds in this steady, wonderful way. This has been a fun conversation and you might say, as you've been listening in, that it's been more of a step one conversation, more asking than it has a step three conversation. It's been some of both. But it has been a conversation that has been beneficial to everybody because everybody is doing this. We've been saying to you all for quite a while that there's not enough action in the world to compensate for misalignment. And yet, most of you are ready to get up and offer the action rather than take time to meditate for 15 minutes every day. And we said that deliberately in a very slow and strong way. <laughs> Wanting to get your attention because it is really important to hook into the energy that creates worlds. It's like saying, I'm going to vacuum the house, but I'm not going to plug the vacuum in. <laughs> I'm going to move it all around and I'm going to make all those marks on the rug and I'm going to go to every corner of every room, but I don't have time to plug it in. And if anybody asks you, please tell them I vacuumed the house because there's no corner of this house that I missed. In fact, some of it I went over twice. 
Somebody said the other day, it's like going to get in your car and refusing to take your keys. We're trying to get your attention that there are things that you can do that will empower you in ways that you don't yet know because you haven't allowed yourself to be empowered in that way. Then once you do it, you'll begin saying things like, oh, it really takes the edge off. It's easier to receive things. I find myself feeling better about things as they come to me. Life is easier and easier as it goes. More ideas are coming, not just the initial ideas, but the ideas that follow through and follow through and follow through. And you have to remember that the universe knows. Your inner being knows. And law of attraction has already assembled the vibrational counterpart to the people who will assist you. And when you find yourself in vibrational alignment with your own resources, then you'll start rendezvousing with them and people will say just the right thing at the right time, new ideas will come. So these are the things that you will be giving up. You ready? We're going to give you a short list. It's not long. You're going to be giving up your need to justify your existence through hard work. And you're going to replace it with the intelligence that creates worlds. You're going to be giving up your concern about how anyone else views you because they don't have time to focus upon you specifically enough to get the real picture anyway. So you just have to give up what anybody else thinks about what you're doing. And most important of all, you're going to give up in large part your attention to outcomes and instead you're going to enjoy the unfolding and that's the biggest piece of all never mind how it turns out it's got to turn out good if this feels good if this feels good it's going to be good over there and if this feels good, then this is going to feel good and it's going to be good over there. But I don't care how it's going to turn out over there because this feels good and it's going to be good over there. But it doesn't matter to me how it turns out over there because this feels good. And if this feels good, then this is going to feel good. And it doesn't matter how it turns out over there because this is the only thing that I'm focused upon. And as you stop putting your nose in the business that isn't yours and put your attention only upon this moment when your only business is feeling good and being in the replenishing mode, then, oh... You're going to have endless energy and the ideas are going to keep coming and the people are going to come to assist you. And then people are going to stand back in astonishment and they're going to behold you as someone who has this magnificent success and who is doing it with such ease. And they will want to applaud you and you will look at them and you will think, I don't care about your accolades. I don't care about what you think about me. It doesn't matter how I'm revered because I hooked into this power and I can feel the power of it. And this is what it's about for me. It's about the replenishing mode. It's about the receiving mode. It's not not about the outcome. We want so much to say this in the way that you can hear it. When the outcome doesn't matter, it's only the energy that's flowing now. That's all that matters. And it's got to be all that matters because it's all you've got control over, you see. So you've been just trying to get too far down the road in everything, and that is burdensome because you're not ready for that. You're ready for this. And then ready for this, 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 and 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 this, and this, ready for this, and this, and this, and this, and ready for these, this, this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and ready for this, and this, and ready for this, and this, and this, and ready for this, and this, and this, and feeling so much power because you're on point with all of it. You're dancing with the universe. You're in the right place at the right time. The ideas are flowing. Someone else is there to meet you, and more is coming, and more is coming, and more is coming, and more is coming. And for the first time ever, it's not overwhelming because you're not trying to be the engine that makes it happen. You're letting the energy that creates worlds be it. And you're just receiving your part in it and just sort of dancing along the way with it. See the difference? Really good. Really good. Really good. This has been a very wonderful beginning to a very wonderful conversation that we'll be having all week long. Have some fun with the whales tonight. There is great love here for you. Yeah.